Coffee morning, coffee morning. I just took 10 of the deepest breaths ever known to mankind. I'm going to drink this cup of coffee. I'm going to tell you the story. I'm going to tell you a snapshot of a story about just before I moved to California. This was back in um, 2008, near the end of 2008. I had made my decision to move to California. I had been coming here off and on visiting a girl I was dating. Fell in love with California, the weather, the people, the palm trees, the whole scene, the music world, the music industry, everything was here. I fell in love. So after a few months of visiting, I decided to leave Oklahoma, move to California to pursue a relationship, to try to make it in the music business, and number three, just to change my entire life because to tell you the truth, I was pretty much falling apart at that point and I was on my last legs. If you ask anyone who knew me at the time, you know, 80% chance if I had stayed in Oklahoma, I probably would be um, dead or in jail or in a mental institution somewhere because I could not stop drinking. And at this point, I had given up, sold most of my things, quit my job. Everyone knew. I had quit my bands, told, said my goodbyes, and I was spending a few days just unpacking the remainder of my things. I gave away 80% of everything I owned, packed a few things that I kept into the back of my car, and I was leaving for California in a few days. That's what was happening. I was renting a house near the river there in Tulsa. It was a nice place in a really nice neighborhood. And remember, in, I'm in LA now, in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, this is funny, I had a three bedroom house. No, it was two bedroom with a third room that could be called a bedroom. So it was probably a, more like a two bedroom house. Big, nice, big backyard, huge wooden patio that just was amazing. Basketball goal in the court, I mean, in the driveway. Uh, big yard, big fenced-in area. I mean, it was just a garden. It was great. For a single dude, it was way more room than I needed. And the beauty of it was it cost $700 a month is what I was paying. 2008, <clears throat> two or three bedroom home, big yard, big fence, driveway, basketball goal, big place, big giant kitchen, 700 bucks a month. That place in Los Angeles would cost probably 5,000 a month to rent. Maybe, maybe, maybe four, depending on the area. Three to four to five thousand dollars. But so I'm living in this place, <clears throat> 700 bucks a month, which for me is, you know, crazy expensive at the time. And I was renting the place from a uh, uh, husband and wife. Really cool guys. And this happened to be one evening where I was packing things into my car, loading up the back seat a little bit. I had one of those Scion XB little boxy cars. I thought it was great, the greatest car ever. It was my first brand new car ever. I was 34 years old and it was my first brand new car ever. It cost like $16,000 new. I loved it. So I'm loading my things into my car, which were literally just a backpack full of clothes, uh, some keyboards and a computer, a couple guitars. I didn't, take much, didn't bring much with me to LA. So I'm loading these things into my car and the, the landlord wife, the wife of the couple came up to me and she said, Hey, just, just wanted to say, Hey, I know you're leaving. You know, you talked to my husband about it, but I just wanted to, you know, see, see what's going on, make sure everything's cool. And thank you for being a, a great tenant. I said, okay, cool. She said, so where are you going? I said, well, I'm moving to, to Los Angeles, to Hollywood. She said, w why? And I said, well, you know, I gave her my three reasons. I said, there's a, a relationship I'm pursuing there. Uh, the, the whole music industry's out there. You know, I've been toiling away in Oklahoma for six to seven years, playing in bars to, to people, but you know, I really haven't had that much contact with the actual music industry. And I think if I move to Hollywood, you know, that's what happens here. You, you, if you do well here, you just become a star. You turn into a movie star, that you go on tour with someone, you just, you're gone. It's a weird thing in, in Hollywood. One day someone will be telling you that they're a waiter slash actor and then two weeks later, you'll see him on a billboard on the biggest new movie coming out of all time. It's really weird like that. Same with bands. Someone will have a new band, but they also work at Denny's. 
you know, a month later there on tour with Marilyn Manson. It's, it's really wild how it works. But I told her I was pursuing a relationship, pursuing the music industry, and number three, I just needed to really get out of town because I wasn't doing too well. And she said, so you sold, sold all your stuff, gave it away, and you're moving to California. I said, yeah, that's what's going on. I was feeling great about it. I was excited about the whole thing. Couldn't wait to get started. She said something that blew my mind, broke my heart, made me feel terrible. And I, I still remember it to this day. And I don't think she was a mean person. Like, I don't, they were nice people. I think she just made a comment without really thinking about it. And a lot of people do this, myself included. We say things without even realizing that what we're about to say may crush and ruin the spirit of the person who's hearing what we're blabbering about. It happens with parents and kids, happens with friends, happens with family, happens with landlords and renters. So like I said, I don't think she was a bad person. I think she just was repeating something that she probably heard when she was younger because she was much older than me. I was 34 at the time. She must have been 55. She had me beat by 20 years. She said, oh, so you moved to California selling all your things. And I said, yep, that's it. She goes, well, aren't you a little old for that? Ha ha ha. And when she said that, my heart just melted. It died. My whole body died. If my shoulders were up, they went down. I was just like, I didn't know what to say. I had never been, I had never thought about it like that. Because most of the time when someone says like, I'm selling all my stuff and moving to California. You know, they do that when they're like 17. Move out here to start a band and try to make it. You know, 99% of them are back home in two months, scared to death and wishing they had never left. But then the rest of them become like Guns N' Roses and bands like that. Um, but she told me, she said, aren't you a little old for that? Just mentioned it. And I went from being excited, happy, feeling like I was on the verge of something really big. I knew something good was going to happen in California. But when she said that, it broke my whole spirit. It was like she was my mom and I was a kid and she just said the wrong, she called me fat or stupid or something and it just broke me. She didn't even think about it. She just, our conversation ended. I probably said something like, yeah, probably, ha ha, I'm too old for that. Yeah, you're right. And then she walked away and I just, to this day, it still pops in my head all the time. Luckily, it pops in my head because now I proved her wrong, big time. Because within six months, I had, my whole life had changed around. I had, I had started doing affiliate marketing. I made more money than I had made in the last 10 years combined in about six months. It was just magical. Everything went as I thought it was going. Well, not everything. You know, the music career didn't take off. The, the relationship fell apart. But one of my ideas, the affiliate marketing thing, blew up and I stayed sober. Those were both miracles. I've never thought, I've never forgotten about it. And it's why to this day, it's one of the many reasons where I'm able to, one of the many instances where I'm able to look back at my life and see how someone's simple, just a sentence or a phrase, had the potential to destroy my entire life, especially when you're a kid. Because you listen to adults like they know what they're talking about. Now, the older you get, you start to realize, oh, adults aren't really these magical beings. They're just, you know, they're just kids with beards and boobs. That's all. You know, they don't have any special secrets. They're just like, like, like a five-year-old, but they have beards and boobs and, and money. So you have to listen to them and they're, they're in charge. It always stuck with me. And that's why you have to be really careful what you say to other people. Two things. You have to be careful what you say to other people. And you have to be really careful who you listen to. Those are both two sides of the same coin. Because one, if you, if you tell someone the wrong thing, it can damage them for life. Let's say you have a little kid at, at home. And he or she, yeah, he's a little chunky. And you make cracks in the morning before he goes to school. You say something like, you know, don't eat the school or ha ha ha. Don't, you know, you, you make a comment related to weight. Like, all right, chub, all right, chubby, all right, chubsy. You know, just innocently poking fun at his uh, size. And you don't know. He may be getting beat up, bullied, picked on at school. You have no idea. And then now he's getting it from mom or dad. And the problem is, not only does it hurt their feelings at the time, but it sticks for decades. They will, this kid will probably lie in their deathbed at 80 years old going, I'm fat. 
and they're not even fat. It just is stuck in their head from some, some weird sentence that their parents said when they were kids. I've seen it happen a million times. And so you have to be really careful what you say to other people. Like if, someone, like if someone comes to me and they're on their way trying to change their life or make a breakthrough or do affiliate marketing or try to change their world, I'm really careful what I say because I don't want to say anything that's going to discourage them and, and then be implanted in their brain for decades. I don't want to be that guy. I've had many of those people do it to me. There's a blog post I'll put in the description called Why I Still Don't Trust Adults. And it's about this about something a woman said to me in a youth shelter when I was a little boy. She asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, and I said, a rock star. And she said, no, no, you can't do that, it's impossible. She said, what else do you want to do? I said, I, nothing else, that's what I'm going to do, that's all I want to be, that's all I want to do. She said, no, it's impossible, what does your dad do? And little did she know that my dad was a great guy, but he was a morbidly terrible alcoholic, abusive, he had been a musician, his drinking had killed his opportunities, and so at this point he was living in a shack, working at like a fiberglass factory or in an oil field, and he would be dead from suicide within one year from the time that she said this to me. She said, you can't be a rock star, let's be realistic, what does your dad do? I said, well he works in an oil field. She said, okay, that's what you're going to do. And she pretty much, without knowing it, damned me, crushed my dreams, and damned me to becoming my father. Which, you know, over the years, I almost did. I almost ended up there as well. If I hadn't left Oklahoma, like I said, there's a really 95% chance that I would be in the same position. But she didn't know it. She thought she was helping me. She thought she was helping some kid be realistic because someone had probably told her when she was a kid that you can't be an actress. You can't be an actress. You live in Oklahoma. You need to be a waitress. You know, you're gonna. She worked at the youth shelter. That was the best job she came up with at 35 years old or however old. But that one stuck with me for my whole life too. So you have to be careful what you say to people. Really careful, especially kids. And then the other side of it is you have to be careful who you listen to. You know who I listen to these days? Just about no one. I listen to everyone with a grain of salt. Number one, I can't risk. I can't believe in them 100% because that means if they say something about me like you're too old to move to California that I have to believe it's true. Over the years I've come to realize that people aren't telling the truth. They're not right about damn near anything. No one can predict the future. No one can even predict what's going to happen today. And then it happens different for everyone in their own life. Like people ask me for advice, how do I stop drinking? Well, you know, I don't know for sure because you probably have a ton of different stuff going on that's totally different than my experience. I had to do this, 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 go to AA, do that, blah, 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 get run over by a car. But for you, it may be totally different. So it's hard to even give advice, but you have to be really careful who you listen to because most people are lying. They're, they're, they're or repeating lies that they think are true based on something that some other moron told them 20 years ago. You know, if your dad tells you that Chinese people are terrible and you grow up saying okay I hate Chinese people you don't even know why well my dad told me well your dad's a racist well maybe not but his dad his dad may have told him Chinese people are terrible and so he just had it in his brain he, that's a fact to him Chinese people are dishonest or whatever it is and then you go you trace it back it could have been a hundred years ago where there was this racist guy against Chinese people and he mentioned it to his son like piece of advice son Never trust a Chinese guy because maybe he had a bad experience. And then it just filters down the family over generations and you have a family of people that hate Chinese people for no real reason. Based on a bad experience someone had a hundred years ago. So everyone's kind of just repeating these stupid phrases and these stupid uh, cliche sayings and, you know, limiting people's lives. Like imagine if, 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 if I had listened to, to her says, you, you know what, I am too old. Let me just unpack my things, put it back in the house, go down to the liquor store, get a couple bottles of whiskey. I'm too old for anything to change or for anything to get better. So why not just drink it away? You know, I've only got a few years left. I'm 34 years old. I'll, you know, that's old. Imagine, I, sometimes I think about it. I'm like, I wonder what would have happened if I had listened to that idiot. So be careful. That's the message of the day. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful what you say to other people, especially if you have kids or young 
people in your life that are still trying to figure their life out. Because if you say the wrong thing, you may destroy them. It could be as simple as saying, if you don't do your homework, you're never going to become anything. That's dangerous. That's off. That's terrible to say to someone. Or you've got to get it together or you're going to turn out to be a loser. That can condemn a child that was going to otherwise do well into becoming a loser or a drunk or something. So that's it, man. Hope you're doing well. And I hope whoever the, wherever the woman is that told me I was too old to move to California, I, I'm not mad at you. You were just repeating some bullshit you heard in your past. I get it. But I proved you wrong, didn't I? And on that note, I hope everyone's doing great. Here's to proving people wrong. Here's to proving people wrong, man. Coffee cheers to proving people wrong. Over and over and over again. Let's do it. Have a great day. I will see you in the future.